Hello and welcome to my channel, I'm Nigel Gardner. This week I'm talking about Duke Ellington's classic from 1932, It Don't Mean a Thing If It Ain't Got That Swing. All right, so there are two chord progressions in this song. Uh, the first one, I'm just gonna play for you right now. Let's check it out. Okay, so why do I love that so much? Well, look, you've got G minor for four bars, and every time we play a bar, we drop one of the notes, so we get this chromatic. So you end up with the chords G minor, G minor major seven, G minor seven, G minor six. All right, I thought I might take a moment to talk about the G minor major seven. 80, 90% of the time that you see that chord, it'll be in this situation where you've just got this That kind of descending chromatic thing, it, it's, you know, everyone at G minor is clearly a common chord. G minor seven is a common chord. G minor six less so. And G minor major seven is really not common. But that's because standing on its own, it's too dissonant. So it makes sense that you're only really gonna see it in this context. So the next part is C7. F7 into a B flat. We'll talk more about that in a second. This C7, F7, B flat. It's it's not quite a two five one, but it's close to one. Um, it makes sense that it follows on from the G nicely. It leads us into the B flat. The only last two chords here are B flat six, which I'm going to play either here or down there. And then you've just got a D9 with a flat 13. Um, we only have six strings as guitar players, and I'm, I tend to only use five at a time anyway. I just thought I might just quickly go into that chord, uh, the, how you get to a D9 flat 13. So I take a D major, I put in the flat seven, then I put in the nine, then I put in a 13. Then we flatten that to make it D9 flat 13. Okay, let's just check out the melody. It don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. That one more time. It don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Now it goes to this second section where we've got Alright, so why do I love that second section? Well, we've got the 2-5-1 in the key of E flat there. Then we've got G minor and C7 would have been perfect here, but they've gone for C7 flat 9. You're the everything, which makes sense with the don't mean, um, it don't mean a thing if it so you've got that. And then we've got F7 to D7. That actually is quite interesting. I've seen people, there's so many different ways that that seems to appear online. I've been looking at these versions where you've got F7, which is definitely my favorite. I've got F7, E flat seven, D7. So the simplest way of playing this is just a bar of F7, a bar of D7. It don't mean it. But what about this? But also, if we can add in a ninth chord instead of a seventh, so we get like. It don't mean a thing. So that second section, F minor seven, B flat thirteen, E flat major seven. G minor, C7 flat 9, F7, E flat 7, D7, and then back into the main riff. Um, all right, I'm just going to play the whole thing. Let's see how it sounds.
here lastly when it comes to improvising over this tune um, we're looking at G minor, G minor pentatonic um, you could use Dorian there because you've got that, that E, the sharp 6 but the rest of the song really is B flat I mean that's uh, that next section C7, F7, B flat it's kind of it's just a 2-5-1 really for the key of B flat I think it's better to think of this as four bars of G minor and then the rest of the chord progression is in B flat major. All right guys, thanks so much. If you enjoyed this, uh, please like and subscribe and I'll see you again for another video. Until next time, stay classy.